these people are not running education in the interests of children or in the interests of staff. They're running education in the interests of the Kenelson Group's profits. And we say that has to stop. The funding that the school receives is £53,000 per student. More than Eton. And this is what we've got. There's nothing else. There's no playground at the back. There's no playing field. There's nothing. There's no gymnasium. There's no swimming pool. In the winter, we have to wear our coats in there. In the summer, it's a sauna. We haven't got the staff. We haven't got the people. We haven't got the resources. I have a child that attends Leeway School. He has autism. His needs have not been met. He's aggressed. He doesn't want to learn anymore. Our members have been calling for this to change, uh, as well as calling for decent treatment for themselves and for them to be treated in line with other staff in mainstream school. People in those schools are very much isolated and not keyed in, and of course they're not part of national paying conditions for either teachers or support staff. They didn't get the pay rise that most people working in schools got this academic year. They have no pay scales. They get seven days of sick pay. September 2019, I st first floated the idea of the union. All this started with was a request for union recognition and for parity with every other education worker in the country, the vast majority of education workers in the country, particularly around the issue of sick pay. In the end, 50 out of 53 of us signed a letter to the leadership of the school. We just wanted parity. They were prepared to ignore that, and we had six days of strike action before Christmas. Everyone that is here today is here because we know what is right, and it's time for Kedleston, it's time for Leeways to start recognising what we should be getting, what our pupils should be getting, and standing up for what's right as well, not just what goes in their pockets. People were told that Kedleston lawyers were looking at mass dismissals if people carried on with their dispute. I think there was about six disciplinaries within the first half term, and two of them resulted in dismissal. There was myself and another member of staff. We decided to come out in support of them and to stop the victimisation. and the family. The community loses both ways. It loses because these schools are priced to maximise the profits of their owners, but also because children in this school do not have the space or the facilities or the teacher-child ratios they should have. We delivered a petition of 1,200 signatures to the Kettleston Group headquarters. We have real concerns about an organisation like Kedleston Group, which is owned effectively by Paul Brosnan, son of Dennis Brosnan, a multimillionaire who made his name in the Kerry Group food producer. Paul Brosnan had previously been in charge at Hasselbeck, responsible for the Winterbourne care home, the site of a major scandal involving the abuse of residents with significant learning difficulties. Um, yeah, we're here from the National Education Union. I think this is a, a letter we'd like to, to well, we're intending to hand deliver it to Paul. Mm -hmm. I think, like, and which is setting out things, some of our serious concerns about uh, the treatment of our members at, um, in Leeway School in Hackney. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Leeways is one of 11 schools and two residential homes that are run by the Kettleston Group and all of these schools are funded by taxpayers' money. If you look at their accounts you can see that in previous years they've made several millions of pounds worth of profit. Their ultimate parent company is registered in Jersey. They would only do that for tax purposes. Our government says that if you're a state provider you don't make a profit. But then we've got all these places like Leeways doing the state's work. They're educating children that would otherwise be in state schools children with special educational needs and disability, entirely funded by the state, and they are making profits. Where all the money coming in is from local councils. The issues that we have in Somerset are to do with uh, independent, non-maintained schools, private schools, which pick up the students that can't be coped with in the system. 
There are a couple of organisations that do this. The Phoenix Education Company, there's also Propel Education, which take high needs budget money from the designated schools grant and from local schools to fund and support the students in those schools. Terms and conditions are not very robust. Their disciplinary processes are not very robust, which means very quickly uh, members of staff and members of our union lose their jobs very quickly and there's a big turnover of staff. A multi-academy trust chief executive may be paying themselves 300, 400,000 pounds a year, has a board that they set up, removes the governing bodies from the other schools, has tame governing appointees that they put in place. And who is holding them accountable for the decisions they make when schools have no choice, they can't walk away, they've got no voice, they've got no vote, and there's no regulation either over what happens. This is privatization, and this is deregulated cowboy capitalism. They're cutting the teachers, they want to cut the support staff as well, they want to lessen the amount of the senior leadership team we've got. We've got an autistic hub here, so we've got some very specialised provision and we have got other SEND students within the college that also need a high level of care. Staff are very concerned that uh, cuts to the establishment will mean the school can't deliver the curriculum in the way they want to and it can't look after the kids in the way they need to be looked after. In England, 70% plus of secondary schools are in academy situations. Nobody else does this. People sometimes say, well, America has charter schools, but it's still an incredibly low percentage, less than 10%. Singapore, which is regarded as high performing educationally, so nothing like this. Finland, Germany, France, none of them organise education in this way. Let's go to the common example of Finland where schools are much more locally accountable to their communities. They can provide for those students who need extra support within them. In fact, the special school provision exists within the actually local maintained schools. You go to your local school, your local school is properly funded, you get free school meals, you get free school transport. All of those things happen. Uh, and so communities are properly engaged in the education of their youngsters and not excluded. When our members can collectivise, when they can take action and stand up to the employer, we can win those battles. In Paul, Dorset, we had an education centre for special needs students. Some of our members were on school terms and conditions, others weren't. It took six days of strike action. Uh, we brought the employer back to the negotiating tables and they agreed to teachers' terms and conditions, Burgundy Book in other words, for all the teachers within the school. In the words of the poet Robert Nestor Marley, get up, stand up and stand up for your rights. If you're actually standing for a cause, keep standing. Keep standing and keep fighting because that's the only way that you're going to succeed.